All right, MEGEN 300. Um, welcome back. We're going to be talking about Fourier analysis in this video. Um, so what this video is, is covering is if we have a signal that's changing with respect to time, how do we know what frequencies are present in that signal and why is that information useful to us? So we're going to start off with uh, thinking back to your intro to physics classes here. Where you may have done an activity like this where you have two waves and they have slightly different frequencies, right? So when you superimpose these two waves on top of each other, they interfere with one another and you get these patterns of destructive interference then constructive interference and you get a beat pattern res resulting. So you can hear this if you have two instruments that are slightly out of tune from one another and they both play the same note at the same time, you'll hear this pulsating sound and that's, that's the beat frequency that's forming um, just because those waves are slightly different frequencies from one another. The key idea here is that you can take waves and you can superimpose or add them together and they'll interfere, do constructive and de deconstructive interference with one another and you get more complex waveforms that result from adding those two waves together. Um, so what Fourier analysis does is it extends on this idea. So the key point here is you can actually represent any continuous waveform um, that with a series of sine and cosine waves. If you have enough of these sine and cosine waves and you add them all together, you can just make whatever waveform you want, right? As long as it's continuous and it's periodic, which covers most sort of time domain signals that are, um, that would be changing in, with respect to time that we'd look at as engineers. All right, so the way you do this is you, you create what's called Fourier series, where you're adding together, uh, there an infinite number of sine waves to create a waveform, right? So as your Fourier series goes along, um, the components are decreasing in amplitude, but their frequency is increasing, okay? And when we add all of these components together, we call that a Fourier series. Let's take a look at an example of one of these, right? So if we wanted to construct a square wave, this is actually the Fourier series that will build you a square wave if you have an infinite number of sine waves, right? And we can look at this in the, the graph here on the right where we're adding more and more of these frequency components together. All right, so the first uh, graph up there at the very top, we're just taking one sine wave, right? And our resulting waveform, so we can see in black, we're trying to, to make this square wave that's, that's shown in black there. And the resulting waveform that comes from our Fourier series is shown in blue. So with just one sine wave, unsurprisingly, we get a resulting waveform that looks like a sine wave. Um, it does match the frequency of the square wave, but it doesn't really look anything like a square wave at all. Now what happens is if we start to add more frequency components, so we're adding more sine waves into our Fourier series, is we start to get closer and closer to the square wave that we're trying to create there. So the next graph down, we've got five, and we still have something that's pretty wiggly. Right, it's sort of going up and down where the flat part of the uh, square wave should be, but it's starting to get a little bit closer to square wave. And as we add more and more terms, we get closer and closer approximations of a square wave. All right, so you're actually going to be using that equation in your lab view assignment. You'll build a VI that will do this Fourier series for you, so that you can um, actually build a square wave using lots of different sine waves. All right. Now, it's interesting and a cool mathematical trick that we can build up these signals um, using lots of sine waves, right? But typically what happens as engineers is we're just given some sort of waveform and we want to know what's going on in that waveform so that we can pull information out of it. So typically we're trying to go the other way where we get some sort of complex waveform like the one here on the screen here. This is a, a bearing vibration. And we can see that there's some frequencies in there. It seems like there's something going on, but um, we don't really know what frequencies are present there. That's hard to pull out of just this information. So we want to go the other way. We want to take this complex waveform. We want to break it down into the sine waves that make up the complex waveform. Right? The way we do this is we use a mathematical operation called the Fourier transform. Right? So we're going to take the signal, this complex signal, and we'll break it down into its component frequencies. So what's going to happen here is we'll take the complex signal and run it through this mathematical algorithm. And what will happen is the algorithm will tell us what sine waves are present and what the amplitude of each of those sine waves are. 
right? So the key idea here is the Fourier transform is moving our, uh, our signal from the time domain to the frequency domain which is a, a fancy way of saying, if you look at the, the graphs that result from this, when we take our raw signal where it has an amplitude and it's varying in time, right? So we have amplitude on the y-axis and we have time on the x-axis. After we do the Fourier transform, we end up with a graph that's still amplitude on the y-axis, but it has frequency on the x-axis instead. So we normally call this something like a power spectrum is a com common name for the result of the Fourier transform. You might also hear the Fourier transform referred to as an FFT, which stands for fast Fourier transform. That's a specific algorithm for conducting the Fourier transform. Now in this class, uh, we don't get into the math behind what's going on with the Fourier transform. We just talk about how we apply the Fourier transform uh, to collect data and then analyze the results. Okay, so. Uh, the any sort of software package where you're doing this kind of data analysis will have the Fourier transform baked into it. So we'll show you how to set that up in LabVIEW. You'll get to try it out and break down some signals and see what components are, are present in that, that signal using the Fourier transform in LabVIEW. If you're doing something in MATLAB, MATLAB has Fourier transform algorithms built into it also. So you don't need to worry about what's going on behind the scenes. That's typically more of what, like a grad level class um, application where we'll go in, you actually have to write the Fourier transform. In this class, we're just gonna worry about how do we use the Fourier transform and what are its results mean. All right, um, so when we do conduct the Fourier transform, every frequency component is going to appear as a peak in the resulting power spectrum. So the peak location tells us the frequency of that signal component and the peak height tells us the amplitude of that frequency component. There's a simple example here where we've taken five sine waves and added them together to get a more complex uh, resulting waveform. If we run that waveform through the Fourier transform to get our power spectrum back, we actually get a peak. We see we have five peaks. Um, so one peak for each of those frequency components and the peak height is telling us what the amplitude of each of those frequency components is. That's an example of what your Fourier transform is going to do. All right, with that, that's uh, sort of a brief introduction to what the Fourier transform looks like. You'll get more in depth with this with your uh, LabVIEW 2 assignment where you'll get to actually try out the Fourier transform and use it and you can see uh, what it does and what it's capable of um, in that assignment. So swing by the lab, ask questions. If you get stuck on anything on that assignment, we'll be happy to help you out.